Welcome back to the Vans Duct Tape Invitational, part of the Vans U.S. Open of Surf. Chris Cote here with Shannon Hughes talking to you through semifinal heat number two. This, for all intents and purposes, is a final. Two of the top-rated surfers on the World Surf League Longboard Tour, Honolulu Bloomfield, coming in ranked number one. Rachel Tilly ranked number five, but surfing like a number one ranked surfer throughout this entire event. She has definitely been one of the standouts. Uh, in some ways, I'm really happy they've met up again, but this is their sixth semifinal matchup at this level. And Rachel Tilly looks like she's getting that first wave. Nice section on the outside. Fortunately, unable to make the connection. Honolulu got a piece of the action as well. I love that little stall fade to take off. Nice five to 10 combo. Let's see if she's able to make that section. That trim line is super impressive so far because she was pretty much on flat water. She got this second wave as well. Nice footwork straight up to that hang five and finds that little white water just to give that extra push, which is what you're going to need in some cases to try and make that inside reform. That was super impressive. Wow, she just, did it. Just the way that she was able to find that trim line. Nothing exciting on the finish, but in the matchups, Honolulu has had Rachel's number. She's gotten the win four times to Rachel's one, and she's got a pretty high number for the fan picks right now. That's right, the Pacifico fans have spoken. 67% say that Honolulu Bloomfield is going to get the edge, but a solid 33% for Rachel Tilly. Uh, in terms of what Rachel's trying to do right now, I lean back on the words of Joe Wood, TSOL. This is for revenge. You're both surfers having a look. It's going to be Rachel Tilly, so she does have priority. Her pick of waves, a nice fade right, straight to the nose. With a kind of a cool ride out, little elevator drop. And she's a little bit further up the beach, so we'll see if the transition is easier up there. It's not. Same situation, so again, it's about getting up and getting at it early. Taking a look at Rachel's wave here. Nice approach, lovely bottom turn, swoops it into that nose ride. And then just gives that little crouch down to make it around the section. And then here, if she'd been able to get that bonus inside connection. And we'll see if uh, Honolulu does that. Stands up, yep, gets to the nose. And here comes the turn. Textbook ride right there. So she's probably already looking at a score around a four or a five at this point. The judges don't, you know, increase or decrease their scores throughout the wave. But, you know, if, uh, if she finished right there, it's probably where it would have been. But she makes it all the way to the sand. Gets that wild style finish and rides it to the beach. So she will get a little bit of extra credit for completing that ride. Love what she did out the back. I mean, that was exactly what we talked about. Stand up, nose, turn, boom. You've got yourself a decent chunk of point. This is the wave that they've both been looking for. Honolulu perfectly perched up to that hang five. You could even see that foot so far over that she's got like the arch of her foot hanging. And then she goes into a nice powerful cut back, which the judges are gonna love. And then here she's gonna make this connection that reform, love the little kind of use of the hands there. And she doesn't get back to the nose here, but she does really good to negotiate this little double up backwashy section. And she actually makes it out in and Rachel is engaging, so she fades left. Honolulu goes right. And Honolulu now carving back a beautiful cutback of a nine foot plus board. Trying to remain weightless to make the transition. Can she do it? Wow. That was, that was amazing. I shouldn't have said wow, because when I say wow, they don't make the transfer. All right, so we saw that split peak. That's the longest nose ride we've seen so far this morning. Nice control, nice section of the wave as well. A little bit of space, not like a super steep section, but that would have felt super, super good. And then somehow she just keeps making this connection. She like transfers now into the next wave in front of her and then just can't. So she goes from wave one to wave two. She can't quite make it onto wave three. Oh, Rachel now up and riding on a set. Yeah, this wave has uh, some energy to it. She runs up to the nose, cross-stepping the entirety of her board. Remember, the judges want to see you use all nine feet of these long boards. And of course, some of them are nine three, nine six, but nine feet plus, and they want to see you use the whole thing. And this wave didn't look great out the back, but she made full use of it and more beautiful hang 10 to start that, that wave. That was such a nice nose ride to start off. And like you said, it was a wave that you wouldn't have expected to offer that kind of potential. And she just eyed it out. She is so good. A true Hawaiian water woman at reading the ocean. 
finds another hang ten on the inside section. Meanwhile, the Terminator is out there catching another brilliantly surfed wave. Honolulu Bloomfield is looking unstoppable. Rachel Tilly now needs an eight-point ride. You know, we've talked about Honolulu just being so consistent, uh, picking all the right waves. So gracefully finishes off. Rachel, she's just kind of making some of those mistakes. Maybe on wave selection, she's not quite able to find the one that's going to offer her that good pocket. That one also had a lot of froth, a lot of white water on the surface of it. 15 minutes on the clock, so she's probably just looking for two fresh scores rather than that single one. And let's see if she can replace something with the scoreboard with this. Great bottom turn to start. Gets those toes over the nose. Fades back to the right. And you see the wave just slowly fading. And all she can do is smile. And that's one element of Rachel Tilly surfing that I am in love with. And here she goes once again, the three-time world champ. I mean, straight into the uh, the perfect spot right there. You know. That's right. It's amazing to see Gabriella Bryan with the success she's found past the midseason cut on the CT, who got her start at Rising Tides just a few years ago. Rachel now with a chance, had that nose ride to start. Just a quick kick in and out, so that's not going to really factor into her score line. Rachel Tilly now tied for fifth. Uh, we'll see what happens with Rachel regarding her positioning on tour. Meanwhile, out the back, Honolulu back on the nose. Has a good section to work with here. Into the white water, a critical turn on such a huge board. She rides out nice and clean. So just adding to a super high heat total right now, Honolulu Bloomfield. She's got a 6-3-3 and an 8. This might even be better than that 6-3-3. And she still has 8 minutes to go. Honolulu is looking unstoppable. That was such a good wave. I cannot wait to see the replay. Look at this. Nice quick start. Little pivot set up for that nose ride. Finds that perfectly perched hang 5. And then this next section just continues to unravel. But the way she's able to bank it off the foam and continue keeping that momentum and that flow, that's everything the judges want to see with a turn on a longboard. Not trying to whack it, not trying to go in too hard, but just placing it exactly with what the wave is asking. Then she finds another nose ride and gets that straightened out with the extra section here on the finish. So that consistency has really come into play. And for her this year, she's already that front runner with 5,000 points to her name. Rachel's not going to give up. Quick five, hanging off the tip. And she's fading back now right. Another little hang five there. Some weird water underneath her, so she opts out. Needs a 15.43 total because that last wave for Honolulu Bloomfield is 743. Especially because two of the waves, right hand points that Rachel really thrives in, Malibu and the Surf Ranch, she wasn't even in the draw for. Where for Rachel Tilly, she's already bettered her results heading to Malibu because she had a quarterfinal finish at Manly and she's now improved to a semifinal. So that is going to keep her sitting in those top three surfers within the world. So you're telling me, even on the, the longboard tour, we're going to get a winner in the water. We are going to get a winner in the water, not necessarily the winner of the event. So last year it was the same thing. We had three events that counted. Honolulu won the world title by winning her quarterfinal heat. I can't wait to see the women back there. They haven't been in the water since 2006, and we get to see them charging some solid Tahiti Chopu this year. Honolulu Bloomfield on a victory lap. Couple of nose rides there. Nice looking turn. She is just, I think she's fallen once in this entire heat. That's the yeah. thing about Honolulu, she just doesn't fall, which is pretty much to the detriment of every other woman in the draw. Yeah. Well, I don't know if the Terminator nickname will stick, but it sure does feel like that right now. And now this is setting us up for a really fun final. It's no surprise to see those two surfers heading into the final and to see a big smile on Rachel Tilly's face knowing that She's not going to get the score she needs to win here because she can't get a 15-point ride, but she's going to have some fun and find some flow anyways. You know, it was subtle, but that little turn she just did, the little bounce off the wild water was so cool looking. It was sick. It probably felt nice. Reason to smile. Gets on the nose, and she will make it all the way to the beach. So congratulations, Rachel Tilly. Well served all weekend long. She just had the uh, unfortunate 
uh, half hour going up against Honolulu of Blumfield, who was absolutely on fire. She pairs an eight with a seven, four, three. The surfer to beat, your current number one seeded surfer on the planet, Honolulu of Bloomfield, is going to match up with Kalis Kaleopaa in the finals. That's right around the corner. So before we get there, we got to find out who our men's duct tape invitational finalists will be. Stay tuned. We've got Kaipo Guerrero and Pete Mel coming in on the call. We'll be right back.